I just conducted an interview with an author of a website that's called model3tracker.info. Um, I'm hoping that my viewing audience out there who hopefully have a Model 3 reservation or subscribers to our channel will certainly appreciate this website. I encourage you to go and visit it and put in your information. But uh, here's the interview with the author, Paul Carter, who will tell you more about the website. Hi, I'm talking to Paul Carter, and he's the author of the Model 3 Tracker Info website. Now, it's a website that allows for crowdsourced data for tracking Model 3 reservations from all around the world. So thanks for joining me, Paul. Thank you. So, Paul, can you tell our viewers a bit about yourself and what the website does and what kind of benefits will it give, um, you know, the people out there that are reserved the Model 3? Sure. I am an IT management consultant, ERP developer, and I own a Tesla Model S for the past two years, and I'm a Model 3 reservation holder as well. Mm -hmm. And I also used to have a Model X reservation and decided to uh, track the reservations for the Model X, and I was publishing a monthly summary of statistics on that. And once the Model 3 reservation started, uh, I was asked if I was interested in doing this for the Model 3. So I built Model 3 Tracker as well. I see. Um, I'm active in the EV community. I'm an emotive BC ambassador here in British Columbia, Canada, and a member of Electric Mobility Canada, as well as the Tesla Owners Club president for British Columbia. So... Tell us a little bit about how the website does. It's mostly crowdsourced data, right? You're inviting people to come in and input some of their information. Is there any, um, let's say, user information that's published out there, or is are you just aggregating the raw data and displaying it? It's aggregating the raw data and displaying it. And so what I'm trying to do is crowdsource uh, Tesla Model 3 reservation holders to enter in a valid email, and they can put in a username of, or, or a nickname or a forum handle or whatever they want, and it generates a tracking ID that uh, goes along with your record, and that's the only thing that anybody ever sees. So their username and email are never sold or shared, and the site is uh, supported solely by donation, and there's no advertisements on the site at all. I see. So can you tell us generally what kind of information are you gathering from the users that register with your site? So we're gathering their reservation details and classification as well as their intended configuration. And as we get closer to production, we'll enable some additional functionality that I had done for the Model X tracker as well, and that will be enabled. So uh, you will be able to see when people start to design their cars and order their cars, when people start seeing their cars entering in the production queue and having their VINs assigned. And from that, we'll start to be able to see which options uh, people are choosing that makes the delivery go faster. Or maybe even it's your reservation type. For example, uh, if you're an employee, it's likely you will be first, followed by the Tesla owners, and then the general public. We also know from, from tracking Model X that there are certain options that actually delay your delivery and your production of your vehicle. So we'll be able to see those trends as well. Very cool. Um, as it stands right now, if uh, like I'm looking at the website right now and I've currently logged into my account. I was a very low um, reservation uh, number, uh, you know, as far as when I reserved my car, and of course I found about your site right away, so I went and res um, you know registered as well. Um, I can fill in all the details of my intended configuration. Of course, you know, when it does go live, we'll get a better idea of what's actually uh, what, what's available as far as options. Um, can you tell us about the graphing options and what kind of reports that a user can do once they're logged into their account? Uh, sure. Once users log into their account, they'll see a summary dashboard of the global activity. Um, so right now it's broken out into two buckets, reserved and cancellations. Um, so you can see uh, by category, for example, reserved, how many people have created uh, their reservation today, how many have updated it, and then it breaks it out into uh, date buckets such as weeks, months, quarters, and year. And you can drill into that and uh, take a look at what people are um, 
uh, entering in for information and uh, I have, have this column called variant which shows uh, a little interesting stat if the person's looking for a base model, a mid model, a performance model, or maximum range. I see. In, in the future, uh, this will get expanded just like the Model X tracker in which it'll break it out into further buckets. So once uh, you receive the email from Tesla saying your Model 3 is ready to configure, uh, it'll start breaking it out into the design studio is now open for you. And then when you submit your order that it's now been in ordered status. And then once uh, Tesla starts uh, putting it into the production queue, you will you can update your dates, and it will go into assembly, and then ultimately for delivery. So, having done this for Model X in the past, um, what's been your experience as far as people inputting their data in there? Uh, you know, has the uh, the reports you've been able to generate from this been fairly accurate as far as tracking? kind of the delivery dates and the expected configurations that people have been receiving? Are you expecting that to happen for, for Model 3 as well? Uh, yeah, so with the Model X tracker, it was quickly discovered that the very highly c configured option Model Xs were getting delivered first, mm -hmm. and certain wheels uh, were actually causing a delay. Wow. Um, having less uh, seats configured as well was also causing a delay. So if you ordered a seven-seater, you were moved up. If you ordered a five-seater, you were moved back. I see. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, Elon has mentioned in the past that they were probably going to do with Model 3 what they had done in the past, that higher option cars would most likely be made first off the line. Um, one of my favorite things on your website is uh, when I go down into reports, there's a submenu called configuration popularity. I love this because it shows on a bar graph, um, you know, kind of what people have registered, what their tents are at this point, and it really shows, you know, what uh, what's what people are kind of leaning towards. Like supercharging, for example, is showing an 80% popularity bar. <laughs> I think yeah, that. and and I'm I have one summary that I'll go through in a little bit when I cover the other little bits of the site, um, and we're we're seeing some very interesting trends here, um, but there's a couple of other little uh, reports and graphs that you can see. So there's uh, a reservation by country, and that you could see that so far in the tracker we have almost 60% of our records coming from the United States, followed by Canada, and then in third with Germany with 6.3%. Um, so, you know, we're probably got an English speaking bias uh, in our data so far, but there are a lot of other countries that are contributing. And you can see that on the uh, leaderboard as well, um, where we have uh, city state leaderboard top 100 with Los Angeles, Toronto, and San Diego being the top three cities, uh, state and countries where California, Ontario, and Texas are the top three state countries, and United States, Canada, and Germany are the top three countries. And yeah, and it's very interesting, United Kingdom, Spain, Switzerland, Sweden, Norway, Australia, and Netherlands are on in the top 10 countries. So, so we are getting a little bit of a global presence in, in the contribution to the tracker. Um, and and it kind of bodes normal for having uh, such a high number in the United States because of that, and, and in California in particular, because that's where it's been born and uh, where the major population is mm -hmm. for for people who, who really know about Tesla. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that here in the data. Well, I highly encourage everybody to go and uh, take a look at this. I, I mean, like I said, your personal data is not shared. It's not public, so it's perfectly safe to go in and put in um, your information in here as well as your intended configuration. All this does at the end of the day is it really gives everyone a, a pretty good idea of, you know, what people's intents are. It's quite informa uh, It's quite interesting. Um, before we conclude the in interviews, is there anything else you'd like to uh, tell us about as, as far as the website and the data that you're gathering? Um, just some interesting uh, configuration highlights that I uh, put together yesterday. Um, some people were thinking that the 
um, the way that people would would go for their configurations for like average selling price or nicely equipped that most people would uh, sway towards uh, bare bones and not go for the high end. And I, I wanted to take a look at the two extremes. So I compared the bare bones against the fully loaded. And only about 4.8% of people are going for bare bones and about 6.8% are going for fully loaded. Interesting. And then what really stands out are the range lovers, people who want uh, the largest battery pack, uh, 43%. And of that, 36% of those want it with supercharging. Mm -hmm. And further breaking that down, almost 36% of them as well want it with autopilot or self-driving. <laughs> And then finally, the last little nice little bit of a tidbit is there are a lot of performance lovers. 13.2% want performance with nicely equipped all-wheel drive and, and uh, uh, smart air suspension. Very cool. Well, yeah, thank you very much. I love it. That's great. Yeah, I remember when you, uh, when you did the Model X tracker, I'd, I'd gone in and... I mean, I'd never had a Model X reservation, but I went in and put my uh, information in there, and it was it was fun to run the graphs and the charts just to get a pretty good idea on there. Obviously, of course, you know, with the Model 3 and being a reservationist, uh, I was very particularly keen to go in here and run some reports and just see what's uh, what's going on. So that's uh, very interesting. So I highly encourage um, our listeners and our viewers, of course, to go and check this out. Um, I think it'll give us a pretty good idea, especially, you know, going forward once the car actually goes into production um, to really start seeing some numbers really start to come out of this system and uh, pretty give, it gives a pretty good idea of what's, uh, what people's intents are. So, good. Anything else you want to add, Paul? No, just thank you very much and good luck and happy waiting. <laughs> well, I always tell people, you know, if you think the wait uh, is bad now, wait till you actually confirm your order and you have to wait a little longer. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Good. Awesome. It requires a little bit of patience. Yes, of course. With all good things comes to those who wait. All right. Well, thanks, Paul, for uh, helping us out on this interview. And uh, anyways, we encourage everyone to go out and check out this website. Uh, the website is model3tracker.info. And uh, let's see what comes out of it in, over the next few months. Well, I hope you enjoyed the interview. And, uh, you know, consider going to the website and providing as much data on there that we can so that everybody can benefit from um, you know the reports that can be generated and and especially when the model 3 starts uh, going into production um, that everybody can benefit from some of the data that's on there for tracking purposes so i hope you enjoy the video and uh, don't forget to follow us on model 3 owners on twitter and join our forum at model 3 ownersclubcom and don't forget we do have a patreon page if you're interested it's patreon.com forward slash model 3 ownersclubcom so we'll catch you in the next video thanks for watching